morning. Welcome to SJ336. SJ336. This is Stephanie Jeanette, and this is my video presentation of my book, A Daily Devotional. We're on day 105 in this video. Suggested uh, scriptural references for the entry are Psalm 10, verse 14. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verse 26. 1 John, chapter 2, verse 27. 2 Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 1 through 6, with an emphasis on verses 4 and 5. Psalm 49, all verses. Colossians 3, 16. James 2, 14 through 26. Genesis 4, 21, and 2 Samuel 6, 5. I'll mention here in terms of the way the Bible, the Holy Bible, um, is set. You, It's like from a historical perspective, for the most part, and then you will have your sprinkling of the... Um, uh, prophets yeah. you know Daniel Isaiah <clears throat> but um, so for instance judges you know Joshua judges Ruth uh, first Samuel second Samuel you know the story of Samuel under the guidership of Eli and his mom was desperate to conceive and she dedicated her, her son to Christ for allowing her, her womb to bring forth fruit, not Samuel. Um, Samuel will go on and um, anoint Saul and then later anoint David um, but the Israelites <clears throat> were like constantly becoming more influenced by the people around them. Remember, they were chosen to be light and an example. They kept wanting to be more like the people they were supposed to be an example for. What example? Their relationship with God Almighty, direct relationship, living life according according to him, according to God's ways. So they went from that, you know, remember Genesis, Exodus, Moses, the guidance and all that, to wanting to be more and more. And you have your judges, you had Deborah, you had um, Gideon, um, and they just want to be more like the other people. They want their own king, so eventually they got uh, Saul, etc. So that's what you see in the books when you go from Genesis on through. And so, you know, you got 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, Chronicles, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Chronicles is literally that, the Chronicles of um, the Israelites, the major occurrences in history and in their life their life journey um, with God is this uh, imagine if you kept a journal and you know that detailed your interaction with God as you understand him and you have your highlights and you know your breakthroughs and things that where you missed the point and you missed the mark or what have you and God's faithfulness etc I'm gonna repeat what the um, study lessons were you know, sometimes you hear a familiar chapter and verse. Sometimes when you just, you may not have heard that because you're writing, you know. So anytime I say 316, I always want to reiterate which book it was, you know, because people can automatically think John's Gospel. All right, so uh, Psalm 10, verse 14, the Gospel according to St. John, uh, chapter 14, verse 26. 
1 John 2, 27, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 1 through 6, with an emphasis on verses 4 and 5, Psalm 49, all verses, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, Book of James 2, chapter 2, verse 14 through 26, and the book of Genesis chapter 4, verse 21, and the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 5. And I'm going to read in both the King James and the English Standard Versions, St. John 14, 26, 1 John 2, 27, and 2 Samuel 6, 5. James Version first. By now you know it's my favorite. It's the first one I ever read. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of, of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps, and on psalteries, and on timbrels, and on cornets, and on cymbals. That's King David. Okay, English Standard Version. Same order, St. John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. John 2, 27. But the anointing that you received from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. In 2 Samuel 6, 5. And David and all the house of Israel were making merry before the Lord with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. And now for the entry, oh, no, the song rather. It's by Anointed and it's called Send Out a Prayer. The YouTube upload is dated May 31st, 2010. Again, the title of it is By Anointed, Send Out a Prayer. YouTube upload date May 31st, 2010. Again, this is entry 105. You've no doubt heard it before from a worldly perspective. You cannot help another until you've helped yourself. Of course, to a certain extent, it's true. The problem lies, however, in how we go about our own way of determining the time when we can help others. Is it after a certain amount of savings? Is it a certain time after post-education? Is it after the children have left the nest? Is it after we retire from our job or career? The glorious thing about following Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior and King is that he puts us all to work and study immediately. We do not have to wait. The Holy Ghost is available to teach and guide us and everywhere we trod, there's someone who needs to hear of him, receive a loving smile from him in us, Hear words of encouragement unto that which is godly, 
develop helps projects for matters of immediacy, etc. No one is excluded. We all have a ministry. We just have to open our hearts to receive it and honor God Almighty by pursuing it to His glory. What's your mission right now, today? Is it your next door neighbor? Is it your local county clerk's office? Is it your local firehouse or police headquarters? And did you miss an opportunity yesterday to minister unto someone in need? If so, why? Was it fear that made you change your mind from the first thought born out of Christ Jesus' love to a decision of no? Did you consider bringing the fearful thought under the captivity of the mind of Christ Jesus? <clears throat> Are you up for the challenge <clears throat> that is walking in with and for Christ Jesus as his ambassador of healing to the nations? You can lighten your pastor's load by being the fully committed Christian of faith unto good works. Prayerfully seek the answers to these questions and trust our Heavenly Father to guide you wisely for your next step. The pastor in caring for himself so that he may maximize his ability to care for his flock is to carve out a regular time of reflection and prayer with Christ Almighty. <clears throat> he ought to also exercise regularly, eat well, including fasting appropriately, and keep his communication lines appropriately open or close, as the case may be, toward those who God Almighty has inspired him to take on as part of the ministry Christ Jesus has charged unto him. The pastor is to be clear about his expectations and needs and prayerfully employ those around him to help accomplish God's glory through the church, little c, and church, capital C. You will note that I indicate church, capital C, uh, located C and church, capital C. I do so because the church, capital C, is a body of believers that worship Christ Jesus in spirit and in truth, which may or may not be everyone currently in one's church, little c, the building. Also, there may be those of the body who will be called on to help with some matter of the church, although they may not be a member or any way associated with that particular local body, yet loves Christ Jesus just the same and is interested in helping bring some particular blessing to fruition. It's also a good practice as a pastor to take that time needed to engage in those activities that inspire your messages and communication with God Almighty. Perhaps it's doing a round of golf, or taking your grandchildren out for ice cream, or perhaps it comes from people watching or a few hours on the beach, or maybe traveling from overseas travel to local and regional day trips to a museum you've yet to get to. That helps you provide fresh, relevant messages to your flock. If you're traveling for an extended period of time, I would suggest traveling with your wife, um, but also um, you may, you know, the Lord may want you to travel alone with him or whatever, but um, I really don't see where you would need to do that without your wife. You want, and she would know if you're needing, you know, all your space or whatever so or maybe music or art which you enjoy listening to and or delivering unto others via your musical talents that moves your mind and spirit to bring forth teachings of light unto the world whatever it is it's wise to engage in such as our lord and savior and king would have you to do as communion with him in nurturing your mind spirit body and soul for his cause in the intercessory prayer for 105. Dear Father God Almighty, thank you, Lord, for your steadfast love that we may abide in you secure and purposely. Please help us help you to help the world. And Lord, we pray for the wealthy health of Burkini Faso as ushered in by new and or revamped discoveries regarding sesame and maize crops, along with financial literacy financial literacy. In Christ Jesus' holy and precious name we do pray. Amen. Well, thank you too for tuning in.
Today, 105 of a daily devotion. Stephanie Janan on SJ336. Have a great day.